Hi, and welcome to our vidcast today. My name is Trevor Gearhart, and I'm the admissions director here at Northland International University. Today, we're in for a real treat because I have a chance to do a Skype interview with one of our graduates. His name is Brendan, and I'm specifically not giving you his last name for this reason. He is a missionary in a limited access country. So I'll simply say that it's Brendan and that he's from Africa. And Brendan, thank you so much for giving us the chance to broadcast with you live from Africa and uh, from Dunbar, Wisconsin as well. It's really an honor to be able to talk with you. Well, thank you, Trevor. I'm glad to be here. Now, Brendan, I can remember when you came as a student six years ago, and here you were, a wide-eyed young man, 18 years old, 19 years old, trying to figure out God's will for your life. And I know you had a little bit of an idea of the fact that God might give you a burden for missions, but tell us a little bit about how over the time that you were here, God really worked in your heart to uh, point you toward spreading the gospel outside of the boundaries of the United States. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, when I first came to Northland, I was, uh, like you said, a freshman, and I only knew a couple things. I knew I wanted to go to Northland because I wanted a good uh, Bible education, a good foundation for my life, and I wanted to grow in my walk with the Lord. Those were two things I was looking for when I came to Northland. And up through my freshman year, up till uh, my first missions conference, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and starting at my first missions conference, I, I began to think uh, that God began to work in my heart, and He asked me through His Word, you know, whether or not you're willing to follow me, Brendan, in, in ministry, and so He took me from my freshman year all the way through till I finished at Northland uh, from steps, um, Brendan, are you willing to serve in ministry, are you willing to serve in full-time ministry uh, as a missionary, are you willing to go to the ends of the earth? Are you willing to stay at home? And once I was willing to answer all of those things, my last year at Northland, he gave me the opportunity to come to the country that I'm in right now, in North Africa. And uh, God really did a lot in, my, in me during my time at Northland there. Now, Brendan, if you don't mind, I'd like for you to roll the clock back just a little bit, because there's a lot of young men and young ladies here at Northland right now going through what you did. What kind of advice do you think you could see yourself giving to the Brendan of six years ago, or uh, roll it forward to today, to the young men and the young women who are thinking about missions now, what kind of advice would you give them as a seasoned missionary now who's been on the field for a while? What would you say to them? I would tell them to, to be in the Word and to always uh, be humble before the Lord and seek His face, what He has in His Word, and try and be submissive and humble before Him, always being willing to learn and to grow. You know, there's no magic pill, no magic uh, lightning bolt that suddenly jolted you and said, be a missionary. But step by step, like you were saying, God just revealed to you bit by bit over the course of time that this was what he had as part of his will for your life. Yeah. You know, here's a question that I often encounter, Brendan. What is it about the field that you've chosen, North Africa, that you believe was clearly directed by God as far as your choice for the mission field? Because there's so many places that you could have gone, and yet it was clear to you that this was the one place out of all the options that God was directing you. Could you talk about that for a few moments? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. Why why choose in North Africa? I, it's because uh, gradually up until my last year at North End, I was considering uh, missions, ministry uh, with Muslims. And the thing about the Muslim world, there are millions of people that have never had the opportunity to hear the gospel. They've they've heard so many other things, but unlike other countries where there are churches and there there, there are Christians and missionaries and the Bible, um, I think the Muslim world, more than any other place, they don't have the gospel. They don't really know who Jesus Christ is. Um, and as I was th as I was praying about it and thinking about a place I could go, I met a missionary at my at my last missions conference. And uh, his name's Aaron. He told me, you know, if Brennan, if this is your desire, I'm not sure if you want to go to the jungles or not, but if you ever come out to this country where I'm at, I will show you around. There are quite a few cities with hundreds of thousands of people, no missionaries, no churches, no gospel here. And uh, from there, I just started thinking about it, started praying about it. And uh, about a half year later, I just found myself on my way to go be where I am now, where I've been for a little while, about a year. 
What does a typical day look like for you on the mission field, Brendan? I, I know that the preaching side of it is what you're passionate about. You want to share the gospel. But there's a lot of responsibilities that go along with being a missionary and living outside of your home country. What does a typical day look like for you in terms of what you're doing as a missionary and in general living life day to day? How does that look on the mission field? Well, the typical day for me would look like waking up in the morning, spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer. And then, um, depending on the day, I'll be either learning Arabic for a little while and then going out to meet people. We can go and meet people um, and give them the Bible. A lot of times we have people that are asking for it through uh, an online ministry that we have. And besides that, I have the opportunity to work with some very godly um, men here who are believers in the church here and we get to work together we'll either go and we'll meet with other believers for times of encouragement and prayer or we'll go out and um, evangelize people or sometimes we will have meetings together and um, have times where we we're actually learning uh, we're actually being trained as well from the missionary here that I'm working with uh, but a typical day for me, yeah, that's that's a typical day for me. Besides the normal day to day shopping and traveling and things like that. <laughs> Not your typical nine to five job, I'm sure. Yeah, it's very flexible. I think flexibility is a good word. One use. thing that I think I'm always intrigued by too, Brendan, is how God shows His faithfulness in in giving you a fruitfulness to your work. Sometimes it's measured in terms of converts, sometimes it's measured in terms of church plants, and other times it's measured in terms that only God himself could orchestrate. And oftentimes it's unexpected. Tell us a little bit about how God has shown himself faithful for you as you've been on the field there this last year. God's shown himself faithful in a few ways, many ways actually. One of the main ways he showed himself faithful is... Uh, his continued sanctifying work in my life. I came here with a lot of preconceived ideas and, and a willingness to learn, but he's shown himself faithful by continuing to teach me, to, to discipline me as a, as a loving father. And um, he's shown himself faithful through his word. In the church here, I've been able to see uh, believers grow in the church and the believers I've been working with here and as well as seeing a couple people come to Christ because of God's working through His Word and the Holy Spirit preaching of the Word. So. Amen. You know well, after having been here for the few years that you were, Brendan, that we're a place that's serious about discipleship. In fact, the concept of being one and making many really is our way of putting into action Matthew 28, 19, go and make disciples, which is what you get to do. You're on the front lines of doing that on the mission field uh, every day, day in, day out. You and I, just before uh, we got online, we're talking about um, the discipleship concept of 2 Timothy 2, 2. And in fact, the, the old concept of what a missionary used to look like was to go to some field, stay there for 50 years, and try to reach as many people as you can. But nowadays, the concept is oftentimes this idea of discipleship put into action on the mission field by training national pastors or training people right there in your community to reach out themselves and to share the gospel with others. Uh, tell us a little bit about how your work on the mission field has embraced this discipleship, be one, make many concept. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, first of all, I would say I, I think um, maybe a better word that I would want to use would be teaching and, and, and discipling. Um, I mean, we, are, uh, we would like to train people, uh, we would like to train men to be preachers and teachers ministers of the gospel, but we want to be able to teach them and disciple them so that they could teach and disciple others also. I think that is, in my mind, since I've come here, it has grown to be one of the biggest shifts in the way that I think, because before, I didn't really understand discipleship the way I do now. I would think, you know, discipleship is a lot of things, and it is a lot of things that we do, but specifically here on the mission field, or in the ministry, specifically, want, we want to find men that are faithful to the Word and church, to, to holiness, seeing sin leave their lives, and then invest in those guys and teach them and disciple them so that they can take the Gospel, be faithful with the Word, be faithful with their life before God, and go and teach other people to, to follow that example, follow the Lord. And so that's, that is like, I mean, that's, that is, that's what it's about. It's not just about 
evangelizing, but it's taking those people that come to Christ, finding those people that are faithful, and investing in them so that they can continue carrying on the work. So that's that's a big, that's a good question. Great. You know, I just want to let you know, Brennan, that we do pray for you, and we love you, and appreciate what God's doing through your life. And uh, we're thankful that you gave us the chance to cross paths with you for a few short years before you launched out into your ministry. We love you, and uh, we'll look forward to connecting with you again sometime in the future. I look forward to it as well. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You bet. God bless, and uh, thank you for being a part of our vidcast today. You're welcome. Have a good day.